Bitcoin about to wrap up this week after it did hit new highs, but coming back down to that dreaded 34,500-ish region of which a big focus of today's video. And then, of course, a few other things. One of the major charts that actually gave us a big bias towards Bitcoin having this move to the upside is once again, well, kind of signaling something. And then a bit of statistics on the other side as well. Anyways, other than that, I'm going to welcome you back to the Air Crown Crypto channel. I do have a bit of an announcement today because I have been getting a lot of questions about how people can bet, how people can bet, just gamble more, just gamble more of your life's away um, on the uh, on the upcoming crypto fight night event and there actually will be lines at shuffle.com i do have an affiliate link for that and it is in the description below it actually will award you some special privileges like 100 uh, percent double your deposit bonus i think up to a thousand bucks something like that uh, you can find the direct or sorry you can find that uh, that that promo in the description below and Without further ado, we can just jump right into this one. So first things first, I want to start off with a review of the daily statistics for Friday, um, specifically as Bitcoin on Friday has been more or less neutral in terms of po closing positively or negatively. Uh, slight, slight, slight. Um, uh, favor of closing negatively here over the full history of Bitcoin. Uh, almost 48% of all daily closures have closed positively, that is, giving a slight edge to the negative side. But in the case of bullish versus bearish um, uh, closures, there is about a little over a 2% return actually on both sides. Um, so if we were to kind of play around with numbers and look at this and, and kind of you know forecast what that would maybe look like on price action, if today does indeed close bearishly, then 2% to the downside, which would be right on the average, would put Bitcoin where? It put Bitcoin at 34200 or so. Still on the bottom side of the current range, but in a more precarious place as we'll kind of come into next week and, uh, and speak about a little bit later within this video. On the other side, of course, which I think is a little bit less likely as of right now, um, if Bitcoin were to pop back up, you know, 2% to the upside, it'd basically put it on new closing highs actually at 35,700, 35,800-ish region, um, just to be, uh, just to be uh, aware of that. But for right now, you know, it looks like more of a corrective time as we did look at yesterday based off of momentum oscillators. Bitcoin likely on the short and medium term playing out a bit of sideways and in this case down, but the higher term time frame still remain and uh, and still do favor you know long term continuation, which I do think is important to you know revisit um, maybe on another video. I mean we just spoke about it yesterday for fuck's sake. So, uh, anyways, um, this indicator is actually packaged again with the jewel light. This indicator, I mean that the daily range statistics is packaged with the jewel light and also um, the other indicators that we've been showcasing here on the chart prime uh, deal. And it's all just one massive package now, uh, which you can find in the link in the description below. I just wanted to have like a full fucking value package where it's like kind of a no brainer. And uh, so I linked up with them. They added their indicators. I added some of mine. I'm actually in the process of creating more. And um, and it's actually looking pretty damn cool. And we'll actually be looking at uh, another one of those indicators later on in this video, um, which potentially might be able to it might be able to replace stochastic momentum uh, I, i'm not not convinced just yet uh, but i think that there's a few things that i could add to it and it's possible it's possible uh, but still well and far away anyways other than that uh, let me get my notes back on over. i actually had a dream <laughs> i had a dream where i was doing a video and i had my notes like i couldn't find my notes and i was freaking out um but uh, but yeah let's move on to the next chart so to reference the beginning of this video maybe even the title as well i haven't figured out what sort of clickbait I'll have on this bullshit. Um, but GBDC is that chart in question where it has in the past given us an indication that Bitcoin was going to continue up uh, when Bitcoin was in the low 30s. It was given an indication uh, beforehand that Bitcoin was going to head up, you know, into the mid 30s. And now, as you can see, um, it actually made, I think it made new highs yesterday. Yeah, or sorry, it made new highs this morning. Or no, sorry, that was yesterday. This one doesn't trade uh, in aftermarket hours. Um, and coming into the end of this week's closure, actually looking pretty damn good. Um, yeah, you know, short term can be a bit, bit of correction. But again, this one speaks a little bit more towards the long term. And as we can see, you know, the weekly, which will be closing today in 14 hours, 2 minutes and 38 seconds and counting, um, is looking... It's looking good. <laughs> it's looking good. Um, I still do think that in this particular one, uh, we're probably looking somewhere around the 618 Fibonacci retracement, um, which is about 28 and a half bucks. That is in alignment with this sort of breakdown coming off of the bull trap in um, in March and April of 2022. So where would that sort of similar region be for Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin spot, not GBDC, 
um, if Bitcoin were to pop back up somewhere around there. Well, that would be in this territory here in the upper 30s, like somewhere between about 39,000 bucks, maybe as much as 41,000 bucks. Um, so long term, you know, that is still matching up with some of our other models, which I do think is important to reflect upon because, you know, while Bitcoin is having a short term co uh, correction right here, I don't think it's really anything more than that, to be honest with you. Um, so going back to GBDC, why? Oh, whoops, that's why. <laughs> All right, let's put back, put it back on over here. You know, just looking across the board, um, it does look like this one, yeah, is uh, is once again given a bit of a signal as all major moving averages start to uh, switch into a bullish posturing. All of the exponentials are already are all already in a bullish posturing, but now moving back above that white 200 simple long term, that is going to imply that there is a major base on price action. Um, well, in GBDC, that's going to be like 21 bucks, and the equivalent area would be about 32,000 for Bitcoin or 32,500. So, you know, corrections come down there. Yeah, no problem. Um, just don't want to see closures below there for the very long term. That's speaking towards a macro. The more immediate term, the major area for Bitcoin on the higher term timeframes is again it's about 34,500 um, below there. I actually would be expecting a much more prolonged correction in this current region. But for what it's worth, um, GBDC is saying that that's unlikely to happen here. Actually, uh, looking at the monthly close as well, I mean that was a pretty damn good one. Again, all major move damage back in a bullish posture in there. Long term, I do think that this one very likely continues, uh, maybe even testing the top of the, uh, uh, keep on mincing my words there, but the bull trap um, that we did see in March of 2022. I think that that's still best case scenario um, uh, for this current move. Um, and worst case scenario is probably upper 30s. Uh, but of course, you know, this chart was signaling like a week or two in advance compared to the Bitcoin spot chart. So, you know, this can take some time to correlate or, you know, to correlate with that. Of course, we went over um, the timing with the volatility versus stochastic momentum setup yesterday. And that was still suggesting like, you know, a couple more weeks into the middle of this month of November, which we are in the very beginning of November. So yeah, two, two to three weeks, I'd say. Um, if it doesn't happen by then, then big problems. But for right now, just looks to me like a short-term uh, correction here. Um, going over to CME, which is going to be closed in the week out. Yep, it is looking like a shooting star dildo, which I'm sure a lot of the uh, candle bros are going to be very concerned about. Um, I just look at it as an overall range, you know, uh, range still more or less holds, uh, but short-term correction. Yeah, you're gonna see some bearish divergence here on the daily RSI. So probably corrects at least down to the um, to, to my lowest moving average right here, which is uh, in the low 34. So probably a stab down around there. I'll be looking for a bounce and, uh, and then come back to it after that. Um, things get really crazy then, yeah, 32,500. But I really only be looking for that if we start to see, you know, five day closures or weekly closures below about 34, five. Um, that's where things become a little bit more, a little more concerning, I do think. Anyways, um, yeah, so we've gone through that. We've gone through that. Do we even want to go into the lower term time frames here? Four hour time frame potential for hidden bullish evidence. This four hour RSI has already taken out the lows of what we did see on uh, last Friday, which Bitcoin was trading you know, at about 33,900. So fair enough. Um, and, uh, and I need to reference my notes yet again. And of course, yes, yeah, so why am I, why do I keep on speaking about um, uh, 34,500? Well, that is where that white 200 simple moon average, as you can see, is on the Bitcoin long-term chart, um, about 34,500. Now, long term we have seen this act as a pretty damn good phase sort of decider or decipher for bitcoin meaning that whenever bitcoin's above it generally good when bitcoin breaks below it it goes into those more long form um sideways accumulation periods after uh well after basically having the the parabolic blow off top and subsequent destruction after that um, but as you can see you know it's not gonna be like super perfect like there is a little bit of choppy behavior around but as all other major moving averages switch into um you know a bullish posture in that does essentially set in the trend for the upside and and uh, vice versa for the downside right there another example right here again breaks below once it breaks back above boom big fucking run same thing over here breaks below on the old rona dump reclaims it boom big massive fucking run after that as well and this was the longest time that bitcoin actually lived below it uh, as we can see uh, more than a, or about a year and a half here and uh and so far you know coming back down to test around it that's completely fine we spoke about the, that yesterday just don't want to see like consecutive closures below there that's where i'd say hey this actually does start to look like a trap but until then you know it can spend some time uh, you know another period or two um kind of oscillating around this region and then 
well, if continuation is going to happen, we really expect it again by middle of November, um, I would be saying. Anyways, um, yes, yeah, so moving on to the next thing, HPDR bands. Wanted to once again reference this. Again, got the top right there. Still Bitcoin also within this region. It does actually um, have a little bit more of a lenient region here. Or I guess it is speaking more towards the macro timeframes. Um, as we do see the bottom side of the current 50% of historic returns range lows at about 32,700. So again, I, I do say that below about 32,500, that's where things do start to switch around in the higher term time frames and I'd actually no longer be I'd actually no longer be bullish um, uh, below there at least at least like anytime soon um, but for right now Austin within this region consulting within this region is long term a good thing um, and can take some time of course as we do witness volatility cool off here so it's still you know it's it's still relatively high at about what is this uh, about 69 percentile you know great number um, but ultimately ultimately it, it can reset a lot more you know closer towards 50 percentile um, before we see this next move so i do think that like we said the last couple of days bitcoin to the upside probably done for this week probably the weekend's going to be boring if i had to guess or at least the boot loss probably wanted to be boring um and then coming into next week potential for a move that's the week after that where things really you know if they are going to continue to the upside we really expect it by them um based off these statistics here uh top side of the current range is just below 36,000 bucks or basically 36,000 bucks. So if Bitcoin were to reclaim that region at that point, you know, I guess I'd be looking closer to 38 um, as things continue to march on up. But so far, so good. Anyways, uh, we can go over here and check out Stochast Momentum. This was the indicator I was referring to earlier. Um, this one's a part of the, what's it called, that, uh, that, that indicator bundle that comes with the Jewel Light and several other things as well. But, um, you know, just looking at it right now, it did say, hmm, yeah, it, 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 it did say to kind of be cautious within this, within this region right here, continuation not likely in the more near term, similar to the regular stochastic as well. So not really giving too much of an edge from that. Um, but as we go down the list, we can see that the daily will be turning down today um, after hitting extremes here, uh, assuming that things do close below 35, 350, which do look in my opinion, rather likely. Two-day time frame also in extreme regions going down below 35,000 bucks, assuming that closures happen here or lower. 12-hour time frame now nosediving. This was another one of the big ones yesterday suggesting, hey, we're probably going to see a correction um, at 35,300. Six-hour time frame is also going to be showing downside nosediving here as well, I should add, below 35,400. And yes, I do think that the curvature actually does matter on it. Um, I really want to create another indicator that actually tracks that um, in a more uh, in a more statistical way. Anyways, four-hour time frame at 35,400. Again, also nosediving right there. And hourly is probably all the way at the bottom. No, it's not. Uh, but 34,500 as well. So, you know, short-term time frames continue to, to trade uh, sideways and choppy, I suspect. There might even be, you know, a nice wick to the downside here, testing the official low side of the range. Um, but, uh, but sideways over the weekend, again, would favor the boo laws more long term. So I am interested to see how that kind of aligns with it. Um, weekly time frame, I also do think is important just because we have the weekly closure for, uh, CME that is, and it's going to continue with its upside momentum as long as Bitcoin's above 28,130. Um, what's also of note here is I believe that the, the bi-weekly is closing, that one will actually freshly cross the upside in the bullish control zone, assuming Bitcoin closed above 31,940. And I think even the three week is going to be closing here. And actually, yeah, their, their oscillator is going to start to point up as well, it looks like. Um, what about the three week? Does that one also close? No, that's next week. But this one will also pop back up. Yeah, assuming that things remain above 33,8 or so. Um, so that's why I do still say the higher term time frames, they do favor the upside. That's why, you know, short and medium term time frames uh, headed down here likely amount to a sideways consolidation, likely to set in another higher low. Yeah, there's some problems on like a five day closure below 34.5 um, or a daily below, you know, the current lows here, which is what, 33.4, 33.5, something like that. Um, at that point, you know, can probably expect at least a test towards 32.5, but uh, I still remain macro bullish as long as Bitcoin's above 32.5, I would say. Anyways, I think that is a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video. Again, just referencing the stats over here, you know, we can kind of see today's probably going to be sideways. So I'll end things right there. As always, I want to wish you the best of the best. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow for a boring Saturday.